Soul Twin Audios, stories created solely with the vintage soul in mind. The following production, A Tale of Tyranny, is a love note to the golden age of radio and dedicated in the loving memory of my dear friends and fellow audio drama creators, Victor Aurelius and Jeff Niles. Their voices guided me to write this play, and without knowing them, I don't think I could have. Vic... Jeff, this is for you. Mr. Elliot? Mr. Elliot? Yes? What is it, Rita? Vincent Tierney is here to see you. He is? Yes, sir. Just like you requested. So I did. Uh, Send him in, Rita. Thank you, Rita. You know, I was giving this some thought, and I really want to bring back Sebastian Cartwright. Did you know he hasn't made an appearance in nearly 20 episodes? Listen, I have these ideas and... Uh, That's fine, Vinny. We can discuss it another time. Cecil, on the phone, you said it was urgent. You said you needed to see me right away. I assumed it was about going over new ideas for... Vinny, stop. I called you in here because I needed to go back in your mind and remember. Remember the night I changed your life. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, residents of Salubrious Falls, I present you to a tale of tyranny. Unlike the spooky stories you'll hear in Tierney's Tales of Terror, Vincent's story doesn't feature scares and chills in the conventional sense. But without knowing his story, eh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Join me as we enter his mind, following along as he recalls the true events of that night. And that concludes yet another nightmare of Tierney's Tales of Terror. I'm your host, Vincent Tierney, daring you to have pleasant dreams. Until next time. (laughs) And you're off the air. Oh, now that episode is going to turn into a classic. Just you wait and see. Evocative storytelling, blood-curdling screams, and a plot twist I know the listeners didn't hear coming. Um, yeah. Hey, what's eating you? You're not usually this quiet. Look, Vinny, it's... It's the ratings, isn't it? I knew we should have featured Kim Novak in The Egyptian Curse. Now let's not panic, Emerson. I'm sure Cecil will give us until the end of the quarter to fix this. In the meantime, I'll give Marty a call and see who he can scrounge up. Maybe we'll catch a break and get William Holden. Or better yet, John Wayne. (laughs) Imagine one of my tales taking place in the Old West. Vincent, it's not the ratings. I'm sorry, but Cecil decided to pull Tierney's tales from the lineup. It's nothing personal, but... But what? Cecil decides my show isn't good enough for him. Tell that to the millions of listeners who will stand outside the station in protest. Not exactly millions, Vinny. And what did he find to replace me? One of those silly housewife melodramas? Cecil promised to pay you until the end of the quarter. I know this is a nasty blow, but you'll bounce back from this. Couldn't it be a mistake? He can't do that to someone who's given him ten years of dedication and talent. This is a test. A test of my loyalty. You won't have to worry about gathering your things. I'll bring them to you later on in the week. Vinny, you should leave now. Sandra's out in the car waiting for me. You know, I'm a lucky man, Emerson. Not every guy can say he's happy in his marriage and his career. (sighs) Would you hand me my cane, Emerson? Ah, Thanks. I hope there's no hard feelings between us. (laughs) Of course not. But I do think I'll give Cecil a call. There's no need to call him. Let me handle it. All right, Emerson. But tell him from me that his little joke has worn thin. Here, I'll get the door for you. Emma 
Anderson? <sighs> yeah, it's me. Is it done? I told him. Good, good. And uh, how'd he take it? About how you'd expect. Next time, keep me out of it. Watch yourself, Emerson. Now, when you go on the air, don't forget to tell the listeners. Yeah, I'm getting ready to make the announcement. Good show, Mr. Tierney. Mwah. Hi, handsome. Did you knock him dead tonight? <laughs> Don't I always? I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. After the show, Emerson decided to play one of the cruelest jokes on me. Oh? I wondered why he didn't announce the title of your upcoming tale, not even a mention of a guest star. Oh, he played me, Sandra. Really had me going. He even mentioned how he'd run my stuff by the house to make it more believable. He did what? I know you're disappointed, but I have plans to re-air favorite episodes annually on Halloween. Now, I hope you kids out there are listening, because starting next week, we have a brand new program for you, starring Miss Lucy Henshaw. Lucy comes to us from across the pond, making her American film debut in The Legend of Abigail Ainsley. At only 12 years old... Hey, I wanted to hear how far he'd take the joke. Sandra? When we get home, I'll make your favorite dinner. Steak and eggs with extra hot sauce. Hmm, what's the occasion? While I'm doing the dishes, I suggest you give Marty a call. Maybe he can... Maybe he'll have something to say about all this. Not sure what he could add. Unless he was in on the joke with Emerson. Come to think of it, this does seem like Marty's brand of humor. Hey, Tierney. <laughs> Richard Nesbitt, you were aces tonight. Real scary. I'm pleased you liked the performance, Richard. See, Sandra, Emerson is wrong. Our ratings are golden. Oh, yeah. The wife never misses it. She's gonna be sad next week, though. Oh, I couldn't believe it when I heard. I'd call it the end of an era. The end of an era? What else would you call it when you've been replaced by this generation's Shirley Temple? This generation's... Good luck to you, buddy. Forget about the steak and eggs, Sandra. You don't have an appetite now. That's all right. I'll fix you something later on. Perhaps some soup. Perhaps. Mind if we take a detour? Of course. Where would you like to go? Cecil's office. Why do you wear that quizzical look on your face? Is this the first time you've seen someone like me? One of my kind? I'm not different from you. Each of us... Oh, that's fine, dear. If I had any doubts before, you squashed them. Naturally. Believe me, my Lucy has more talent than most of your garden variety children. My yes, Mrs. Enshaw. That's why I hired her. Now, dear, run along while your mother and I go over the details of your contract. I'm already five steps ahead of you, Mr. Elliot. Lucy, remember to... Mum, I know. I've got this bit memorized, too. Each of us has something to offer the world in our own unique way. I, Abigail Ainsley, embrace who I am, and I... If you're here to see Mr. Elliot, he's in a meeting. Is he now? And who are you, keeper of his door? Go on and tell him I'm here. You wouldn't want to get me into trouble. Young lady, don't attempt to use manipulation on me. That's right out of Sebastian Cartwright's playbook. But then you wouldn't know who he was. Sebastian Cartwright? Then I was right! You are Vincent Tierney of Tierney's Tales of Terror. I am. Now, if you please, I do need to get in that room. My career depends on it. No, Mr. Elliot. 5% on re-aired episodes is non-negotiable. 
and if you want to continue arguing about it, I can get you in touch with my... Vincent! Uh, I can't speak with you at the moment. I'm in the middle of a meeting. Ten years, Cecil. Ten years of writing and voice work and fan mail. And you couldn't even have the decency to inform me yourself? Would it have killed you to tell me my time in the limelight was over? Vinny, dear fellow, I see you're upset. Understandable. And you're right, ten years is quite a long time to dedicate yourself to only one thing. Why not try looking at this as an opportunity to stretch your wings? So the official reason for my dismissal from Cecil Elliott Productions was because you wanted me to have an opportunity to stretch my wings? What's this really about, Cecil? Emerson said it wasn't the ratings. It was partly the ratings. The rest of it was my idea. I felt our listeners deserved something a bit more positive in their lives. Ten years of blood and gore can have a negative influence on a generation. And that's why I also went with... Lucy Hinshaw, this generation's Shirley Temple. Mr. Tierney, is it? I would take to heart what Cecil has directed you to do. Go stretch your wings elsewhere and leave this office. Some of us still have a job to do. If you mean living vicariously through your daughter's talent and walking on the backs of others to get there... Vincent, what have you been doing? You said you'd only be a few minutes. Get him out of here, Mom, Sandra. Mom, did you know about this? Cecil, I'm not I'm leaving here until you give me what I you. came for. No, I can't, Vincent. I'm sorry. Let's go, Vincent. You're sorry? Oh, you'll be very sorry. Make no mistake, if you think a Shirley Temple knockoff is what the public is clamoring for, guess again. He won't bother you again. See that he doesn't, or I'll inform the police. Why didn't you tell me I was replacing Vincent Tierney? Are you going to stare out of the window until it's time to go to the radio station? Lucille Marie Henshaw, you will look at me when I'm speaking to you. Fine. Throw a tantrum like you're five years old. But I rather think three days of the silent treatment is quite enough, even for you. (sighs) At least you're listening to me. Now, go and get your coat. We mustn't keep Mr. Campbell waiting. Did I say I was going? I think you'd better call Mr. Campbell up right now and tell him there's been a mistake. Young lady, the only mistake is the one that you are making arguing with me about this. We didn't come all the way from London for you to tank your career because of a washed-up one-note voice actor. Just because you don't like him doesn't mean he's washed up. Be that as it may, I'm your mother. And I won't allow you to throw away everything you've worked for. Yes? Mrs. Henshaw, Cecil, Elliot's chauffeur is here to take you to the radio station. Yes, uh, tell the driver to have the car waiting out front. We'll be there momentarily. Uh, Mrs. Henshaw, if it wouldn't be too much trouble, could I get Lucy's... Cecil sent us a car. Wasn't it thoughtful of him? I don't think it counts as thoughtful when a chauffeured car is spelled out in a contract you put together for me. Maybe I liked it better when you weren't speaking to me. Now... I'm going down there to greet the driver, and you'd better be down there in five minutes with a very different attitude. I'll show you a different attitude. Dear Mr. Tierney, I'm Lucy Henshaw, your number one fan. At least I was, until... There. Last thing is a quick sound test. Now, go ahead and say something into the mic. Don't keep the man waiting, dear. Say the line we practiced in the car. (laughs) No need to be nervous, kiddo. It's only a sound test. The real show isn't for a couple of hours. Looks like you're saved by the bell, Miss Henshaw. I'll be right back. Cecil Elliott Productions. Hello? What game is this? Vincent. Are you trying to embarrass? I know it's you. Is she there? Well, get ready. Who? Because I've had you know who I mean. That child and her venomous mother. 
Vinny, if you don't stop calling, I'll have to tell Cecil, and you don't want him involved. Do you? She hasn't gone on yet. If you could delay things for me, I only need an hour. It'll give me time to get there and speak to my listeners one last time. Emerson, I owe them that much. If you'll do that for me and give me a chance to prove to them, to Cecil, that he made a mistake... Where's Sandra? At the store. Please help me, Emerson. I'll make sure you get a raise, maybe even a new car. Yes, with part of my salary, I'll pitch in to help you buy that red Volkswagen you've had your eye on. I wish I could, Vinny. Please, do yourself a favor and don't call here again. You're only going to create more problems. Mr. Campbell, are you quite through with your personal phone call? Time is ticking away. Emerson! Ask your agent to help you, and if you call here again, I'll call the police myself. <sighs> My apologies, ladies. We shouldn't have any more interruptions. Now, how about that sound test, kiddo? Are you ready? I am. But I have a favor to ask both of you. I'll oblige if I can. Mum, I'll agree to starring in the series to all of your demands. If from this moment forward you allow me to rehearse and record with you out of the room. But, but that's ridiculous. You need adult supervision. You can't expect me to drop you off. I said and... out of the room, Mum. For once I'd wish you'd listen to me. Very well. You don't want me around. I wouldn't dream of my presence impacting your performance in any negative way. I'll wait out in the lobby. Weren't you a bit harsh with her? She'll be fine, but you promised me a favor. I did. What's the favor? With your permission, I'd like to read this on the air after the episode ends. Lucy, you're aware this could get you, could get all of us into a lot of trouble with Cecil. It's a chance I have to take. There must be a dozen scripts here. Marty, I really appreciate this. Oh, don't thank me yet, Sandra. Yes, of course. He may disappoint us both and reject all of them. It wouldn't be the first time. Uh, I heard about the incident in Cecil's office. Has he... Uh... No, I won't even let him leave the house now. Not even with me. Now, I'm no doctor, but that hardly seems beneficial to his psychosis. Psychosis? Is that what it's called when a person loses a job and is desperate to find a new one? It's not like there's dozens of offers. There isn't a bumper crop of new jobs for Vincent because Vincent hasn't bothered to look. If you were in his shoes, would you feel like looking? You mean if I suddenly found myself on the breadline? <laughs> you better believe I would. Uh, look, I'll do everything in my power to help him, but he needs to help himself, too. I don't disagree with you. You know, that uh, first script, there's a fine supporting role Vincent would be perfect for. It's still an off-off-Broadway production, but it would make him recognized by a wider audience. I'll let him know. Uh, Miss Eagle, what time does that new radio program start, the one that replaced Vincent Tierney's? Eight o'clock, Mr. Jenkins. Ah, uh, that's right. Thank you. That concludes our celebration of Mr. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who was born 203 years ago on this day. Tune in next week for an assortment of classic tunes by Frederick Chopin. We'll be back with Miss Lucy Henshaw after this oh, commercial oh, break. Child stars. I give it a month, maybe two, if she's any good. This brochure will tell them. At Weston University, you don't have to worry about giving an arm and a leg to receive a great education. Or even a head? <laughs> no, but you'll certainly get a head by attending Weston's. Oh, jeez. No, I didn't have any appointments set up for today. I don't know if my parents could have v Vinny, uh, how did you... My wife is an incredible woman, Marty, but sometimes she's naive when it comes to my level of independence. You took a cab. The bus. 
Listen, I don't have time to give you a breakdown of the different modes of transportation I use. I need you to take me down to the station. Really? But what about a cab? The bus? There isn't time for that, and I need you to be there with me, to back me up in front of Emerson. Please. That little girl will be going on the air any minute, and I need to stop her to let my audience know... All right, Vinny, all right. We'll go. But I hope you know what you're getting yourself into. Almost there, Marty. I think we're going to make it. We should. Uh, here, uh, let me get the elevator. No, oh, uh, excuse us, miss. Mr. Tierney? Didn't you learn your lesson the other day? Mrs. Hinshaw, I, I can... Explain. No need, Mr. Tierney. Your presence has said it for you. I need to get upstairs. To give you an opportunity to destroy my daughter's debut. Don't be absurd. We should go, Vinny. Come on. I'll take you home. No, not yet. I have to prove to them that they were wrong. Oh, they weren't wrong, Mr. Tierney. Now, I suggest you do as your friend asked and leave. Or I could make things rather unpleasant for you. Vinny, I didn't bring you here to make a scene. Get out of my way, Marty. Get on the elevator and you can say goodbye to any hope of salvaging your career. We'll see. Coming? No. I have to draw the line somewhere, Vinny. Good luck to you. And that concludes tonight's performance of The Golden Amulet, performed by Miss Lucy Henshaw, our host and star in Tales of Hope. Miss Henshaw, I believe you have a few words you wanted to address to your audience? Yes, Mr. Campbell. First, I would like to give my thanks and appreciation for letting me take part in this wonderful series. I've really enjoyed my time here tonight and will look forward to every forthcoming production. Unbelievable. Mr. Campbell? Your performance tonight. <laughs> and I'm sure the audience will agree with Thank me. Thank you. And now I'd like to... I'd like to... I'd like to share a letter I wrote you to You better have a good reason why you came back here. Did I or did I not tell you never six. to call? That also implied showing up. You know why I came back. Dear Mr. Tierney, I'm Lucy Henshaw, your number one fan. At least, I was, until I caused you so much pain. Now I feel I cannot embrace the title in good conscience, not without receiving your forgiveness. My forgiveness? Go talk to her, Vinny. Uh, on the air? Uh, but I thought... Never mind what I said before. Use my headset. She'll hand it to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Mr. Vincent Tierney sitting here with me. Good evening, everyone. I came here tonight because I had something I planned to say... But instead, I ask you to listen with me as Lucy finishes reading her letter. Go ahead, Lucy. I don't need to finish reading it anymore. Late at night, I would curl up in my father's arms and we would listen to your tales. It was our weekly ritual, followed by a steaming cup of hot cocoa. That's a sweet memory. During those nights, I always felt I had two father figures. My own and... Me? How could I have influenced you in any way? Your father helped raise you. All I did was present scary stories on the radio. There is more to it for me. We're too late. He's already in there. Ma'am, if you want to file a complaint... Mrs. Henshaw, your daughter is still on the air. I'm aware, Mr. Campbell. What I don't understand is how you could let that man come barging in here. Isn't it in your best interest to... Shh! Of course, my father taught me the usual things children learn. I respect him for that, but from you, I learned how to accept myself and to become inspired by everything around me. You're the reason why I wanted to become an actress, and why I was so excited to join this radio station. I didn't know they were letting you go because of me. Lucy, it wasn't your fault. Then you forgive me? <sighs> Perhaps I should be the one to apologize to you. 
I took my anger out on you, and it wasn't very mature of me. I'm sorry I caused you the pain you must have felt. Okay, so am I arresting him or what? Lady, you realize it's a crime to make a false claim against an innocent person. Uh, um, he did come to the station uninvited, after Mr. Campbell here fired him and told him not to come back. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A genuine, sincere conversation between two people who only needed to listen to one another to truly be heard. Very much like the story we featured tonight. Be sure to tune in next week to catch Miss Lucy Henshaw in another Tale of Hope. For your sake, I hope the microphone didn't pick up any additional talking. So what if it did? He isn't an employee anymore. You didn't hear anything I had to say, Mum. Whether he works here or not is beside the point. And I think you've done enough to try and ruin his reputation. I quite agree with you, Miss Henshaw. Officer, there won't be an arrest. I'm sorry for any inconvenience. I wasn't looking forward to being the guy who arrested Vincent Tierney. You folks have a good evening. Vincent? You're all right. I didn't mean to worry you. When I saw you weren't home, I assumed you went to Cecil's again. So I went there, and then we heard you on the radio. <laughs> Did I knock him dead? You always do, my love. My dear, you were sensational. I was pleased with your rendition of the Golden Amulet, and I know our listeners were delighted to hear it from one so young. However, given light of the after performance tonight, there are some changes we'll need to make to your final contract. The three of us can meet here tomorrow for a discussion. You and I had an agreement, Mr. Elliot. Her contract... Oh, forgive me, Mrs. Henshaw. But I wasn't referring to you. You've been listening to Tierney's Tales of Terror, a program specifically written by our very own Vincent Tierney to give you plenty of chills and frights. Be sure to tune in next week when we feature a tale set for the first time during the Old West with special guest star John Wayne and featuring the return of Sebastian Cartwright. We'll be back with a brand new program after this request for Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov. John Wayne. That's why his ratings are so high. Mediocre stories with in-demand stars. You can always wait in the lobby for me. I wouldn't dream of missing what Mr. Elliot and you created without any input from me. Fine. But don't say anything while I'm on the air. Yes, dear. I make you nervous. Time to hit the airwaves again. I mean it, Mum. All right, you two. We're on the air in five, four, three, two. Good evening, friends. I'm your host, Vincent Tierney. And I'm your other host, Lucy Henshaw. And here we bring you our debut episode of... A Pocket Full of Kindness. Many of you already know me. Once a week, I give you tales of bone-chilling horror. And my stories supply you with the antidote. Something to bring you hope and guide you from fear and despair. My father once told me how everyone has the gene for kindness inside of them. I'd like to prove him right. Tonight, we invite you to share your uplifting stories with us. And you're getting your first caller. This one is for Vincent. Hello, you're on the air. I'm happy to hear the tales of terror are back on the air. <laughs> My wife was real down about it when it wasn't on. It's good to be back. Richard Nesbitt, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. Please, share your story with us. I recently patched things up with my old man. Why were you fighting with him? You know, it's funny, but I can't remember anymore. We were always at each other's throats, even when I was a kid. That's a long time to stay angry at someone, isn't it, Lucy? <laughs> yeah, and I have to thank you there, too, little Lucy. 
It was because of your story last week. It was something to do with a man on his deathbed reuniting with his son in his final moments. The golden amulet? That's the one. And it helped put your own situation into perspective? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to waste any more years. And now you're on good terms again? I'm not going to say it's perfect all the time. My old man has a stubborn streak about him and is downright temperamental. But I've learned to give him another chance. Thank you for sharing your story with us, Richard. I'm sure it will inspire others to do the same. Thanks for listening. Vincent Tierney and Lucy Henshaw will be back taking more calls after these commercial breaks. Mom? If you call the time I appreciate you staying call, quiet while I was on the air. I told you I would. We have a lot to talk about. We do. But it can wait until later. We still have time. And I owe an apology to you. There were things I said to you, hateful and unnecessary. Admittedly, there was a bit of truth in what you said in Cecil's office. I was living vicariously through Lucy. Apology accepted, Mrs. Hinshaw. Vincent, Lucy, beautiful work you two. I can't believe I didn't come up with this idea before. Tierney and Hinshaw, mentor and protege, taking on the problems of the world one phone call at a time. Do you want to tell him, or should I? Why aren't his dream now? It wouldn't be very kind. I didn't realize I hired a couple of conspirators. We didn't realize you were listening. No, of course you didn't. But you were saying you wanted to end my dream, eh? Huh? Only as the producer of Tierney's Tales of Terror. You want to take Tierney's Tales and host them on your own? You'll never survive without me. Why, Cecil Elliott Productions have made you what you are today. How could you do this after- No, listen to me. I've come up with an amazing idea. It's sure to improve the ratings and get the listeners truly invested in Tierney's Tales of Terror, along with other productions. I'm listening. We hold a contest. A contest? That's right. We invite our listeners to write their own Tierney's Tale. I'll host it like I always do. While I produce it like I always do. I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, kid, show me what you got. Greetings, loyal listeners. This is Vincent the Reaper Tierney with the news you've all been waiting for. Cecil Elliott has selected three spine-tingling tales to be featured on my program. For the first time ever, I am opening my crypt to allow outside horrors to enter and give me nightmares of my very own. You'll hear stories from Clyde Hall, Pete Lutz, and Alan Kilpatrick. Join us, won't you? If you dare. Tierney was written, directed, and produced by Rachel Pulliam. It was a great honor for A Tale of Tierney to win first place in Will Anderson's Marion Thayer Brown Audio Drama Script Writing Competition back in 2020. Featured in our cast in order of appearance were Raven Anderson as Rita, Glenn Haskell as Cecil Elliott, John Bell as Vincent Tierney, Pete Lutz as Emerson Campbell, Ian Schaefer as the security guard, Marisha Tapera as Sandra Tierney, Boyd Barrett as Richard Nesbitt, Delaney Brittingham as Lucy Henshaw, Andrea Richardson as June Henshaw, Bethany Baldwin as the hotel clerk, Joe Stofko as Marty Jenkins, Sharon Grunewald as Miss Eagle, Nikki Wagner and Jalen Frisbee in the Weston University commercial, Dan Ware as Alistair Bellamy in the Cottages commercial, and Jarman Day as the policeman. All incidental music was composed and performed by Ross Bernhardt, with sound effects by Gina Moravec and freesound.org. This has been a Soul Twin Audios production. 
Copyrighted in 2022 by Rachel Pulliam.